How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to start learning about Scython and how we can use it in Python to speed up our scripts. Now the requirements for this tutorial are Scython, NumPy and setup tools. So when you get the chance, open up the terminal and type in pip install Scython, pip install NumPy and pip install setup tools. Optionally, you can copy all of this and type in pip install dash r requirements .txt, and it's going to install all of these dependencies. So we can just clear this and continue with the tutorial. Moving on, we're going to create a new file called Fibonacci.py. And here we're going to create the Fibonacci function, which demonstrates the iterative approach to calculating Fibonacci numbers. This will be the most efficient pure Python implementation for large values of n because it avoids the exponential time complexity of naive recursion. So here we're just going to create a function called Fibonacci, which takes an integer and returns an integer. And first of all, we're going to check whether n is less than or equal to one. And if it is, we will return n. Next, we will initialize the first two Fibonacci numbers as variables. Then we're going to iterate through the range from two to n plus one. And inside here, we're going to assign b to a and the result of a plus b to b. And finally, we're going to return b. Next, we're going to test this implementation. So here I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check. And then in pure Python, I'm going to print that the Fibonacci of 10 is the Fibonacci of 10. And when we run this, we should get 55 as an output. This is the 10th Fibonacci number. Next, we're going to recreate this both in C and in native Python using a C decorator. So let's open up the sidebar once again and create a new file. And this one will be called Fibonacci underscore Python dot PYX. The file extension here will be PYX, not PI. And this file must be compiled to C before it can be used. Now inside here, we're going to use C import and we need to import Scython. Then down here, we can create a function called Fibonacci Scython. And this takes an integer. Above the function, we're going to decorate it with the C division decorator. And this decorator tells Scython to use C style division. This disables Python's automatic division by zero checking for better performance. Now inside here, we're going to use cdef to define a variable. Then once again, if n is less than or equal to one, we will return n. Then we will initialize the first two Fibonacci numbers as Python integers. And once again, we will iterate from two to n, building up the sequence. Then inside, we're going to calculate the next Fibonacci number using Python integer arithmetic. This will prevent overflow for large Fibonacci numbers. Then at the bottom, we will return B. And once again, we must compile this file before we use it because Python doesn't understand Cython syntax, such as C import and C def. This all has to be translated to something that Python can understand. So during compilation, Cython's going to read the .pyx file, then it's going to generate the C code with the type optimizations. Then the C compiler is going to create a binary extension and that extension can be imported like any Python module. Now, before we compile this and move on to the benchmarks, I want to show you one alternative way of creating this file using pure Python syntax. And to do that, we're going to create a file called Fibonacci underscore pure dot pi. So once again, we're creating a pi file here. And what's cool about this is that we can paste in our pure Python implementation of the Fibonacci function and use this directly. All we need to do here is import Scython and we need to decorate this function with at Scython.locals and tell Python that n is going to be a Scython integer. And this is the key decorator that enables Scython optimization. It tells Scython to treat specific local variables as C types instead of Python objects. Here, we only optimize the loop counter for performance while keeping Fibonacci numbers as Python integers to prevent overflow for large numbers. And to compare these three approaches in a nutshell, you should use the full Cython implementation if you want maximum performance, but this requires compilation. The second approach is good for performance and it's easy to write and debug. 
but it's going to be less performant than the full Cython implementation with the .pyx extension. Then we have the basic one that we created in Python, and this will provide a baseline performance. And it's also the easiest to write. So what we're going to do next is create a setup file, which will allow us to specify how we want to set up this code. So once again, let's open up the sidebar and create a new file called setup.py. And this will be the setup script for building Cython extensions. This module configures the build process for compiling Cython code into high performance C extensions that can be imported and used in Python. So the first thing we need to do here is import from setup tools, setup and extension. Then from Cython.build, we're going to import Cythonize. Then we're going to have to create a few extensions, which will be a list of extensions. And the first extension is going to refer to our Fibonacci underscore Cython file, which will be this file over here. And in case you were following very closely, you will notice that I misspelled this file. So the Fibonacci underscore Python file should be renamed to Cython. It has to match this name. This is the source. If it doesn't find this, it's not going to work. So make sure you have a file named Fibonacci underscore Cython dot PYX. Then right below, we have some extra compile arguments, which will be set to dash 03. And this is the maximum optimization for the C compiler. And then we're going to do the same thing for the linker. Then down below, since we also want to Cythonize the pure Fibonacci function using the decorator, we're going to add another extension. And this one's going to be called Fibonacci pure. Then the source is going to be set to the Fibonacci underscore pure dot pi file. And once again, this name must match the file name we have in our project. And I just want you guys to note that you're not required to pass in name or sources as a keyword argument. It's my code editor that uses these automatically. They're called inlay type hints. And they essentially just tell me which argument I'm passing in. So for these, I'm not manually typing sources. I mean, you can do that if you want, but you're not required to. But for the other ones, you are required to. Anyway, right below, we need to call setup. And inside here, we need to pass in a few arguments, such as the name, and this will be the project name. And I'm just going to call it indently. Then we're going to provide the modules. So ext modules, and that's going to equal Cythonize. And inside here, we need to pass in the extensions. Then we also need to pass in the compiler directives. And that's going to equal this dictionary over here. The first key specifies which version of Python we're using. So here we're using Python 3 syntax. Next, we disable the bounds checking for speed. Then we also set wraparound to false, which disables negative indexing for speed. And finally, we want to use C division for performance. So we set this to true. Next, we want to set zip safe to false. We don't want to assume that the package is zip safe. And finally, we need to provide the required dependencies, which in this case is going to be Cython. And that's all we have to do to create the setup file. Up next, we should build the extensions. And to do that, we're going to open up the terminal and we're going to type in this command, Python setup.py build underscore extensions. And we want to do this in place. And this is going to create some PYD files for Windows or .so files for Linux and Mac, which means we can now import the compiled modules into Python. Now, when you open up the sidebar, you're going to notice a few files. One of them is going to be the Fibonacci pure C file. And then we're going to have the other files that we need, such as the SO file, if you're on Linux or Mac. Also, ignore the projects folder. That contains random projects for my channel. All you should pay attention to are the new files that the setup command generated. Now, before we move on to the benchmarks, let's test out our new functionality, which we compiled to C. And here I'm going to type in from Fibonacci underscore Cython, import Fibonacci Cython. And now we can use this function inside the script, Fibonacci Cython, pass in 100. And I mean, it would be nice to see what it prints. So let's print that and we will get this as an output. We can also test out the regular one. So from Fibonacci, import 
Fibonacci, and then we can run that directly under, and we should get the exact same result. And finally, let's import from Fibonacci Pure the Fibonacci function that we have over there. And I'm kind of scared that I'm name shadowing here since we have two Fibonacci's now. So I'm going to import that as Fibonacci Pure and paste it directly under. And when we run this, we should get the same result three times. And here we don't really see any optimization because they are already all extremely fast. To actually see how fast the Cython implementation is, we need to create a benchmark. So that's what we're going to do next, finally. So now I'm in a file called benchmark.py. And since the purpose of this tutorial isn't to create the benchmark, I'm just going to paste it all in and explain it real quickly. So first of all, I got started with the imports. Here we're importing time. Then from Fibonacci, we're importing the baseline Fibonacci function. And below that, we're going to try to import the Cython implementation from Fibonacci underscore Cython. If we did not run setup.py, we're going to get an error message here. Then below, we're going to try to do the same thing with the Fibonacci pure function. And once again, I'm going to import Fibonacci as Fibonacci underscore pure. If it's not available because we did not run setup.py, it's going to raise an import error that we must run setup.py before we can use it. Then I have the actual benchmark function which takes the function, the arguments, and the iterations, plus a default name, which will be set to function. The first thing we do inside here is call the function. And this is just a warm-up run to account for JIT compilation, caching, and other first run effects. Then we record the start time using a high precision timer. And by default, we're going to run this function a thousand times. Then at the bottom, we calculate the timing statistics. We grab the end time, the total time, and the average time. And then below that, we're going to run the tests multiple times for each one of these values. So first, we're going to test each Fibonacci function with the value of 10, then 20, then 30, then 35, then 50, then 1000. And we're going to compare all three of them based on these values. And we're going to do that 10,000 times. And there's a lot of formatting going on here. So what I'm going to do next is pretty much just run the script. And it's going to look like this. First, it's going to start by calculating the Fibonacci of 10. And in Python, it took this much time, while in Cython, it took a little bit less. And just to be clear, the pure Python mode uses the Cython decorator. So do not mix that up with pure Python. Pure Python is written in vanilla Python, while the pure Python mode uses the C decorator. Then when we try to calculate the Fibonacci of 20, we get these results. So once again, these are a bit faster. With 30, we get similar results. With 35, it takes a bit longer, but still with the C implementation, we get better results. And this is consistent all the way down the line, all the way until 1000, where once again, the Cython implementation beats the regular one. And this was just a simple benchmark to show you the performance boost when we use Cython. For much more accurate benchmarks, we have other modules that we can use. But just to show you the immediate effects of using Cython, I decided to use this snippet. Now, before we conclude this tutorial, I want to show you one more example. So what we're going to do is create a new file and call this one sumsquares.py. And this file will demonstrate Cython's decorator approach for a sum of squares calculation. So once again, let's get started by creating the actual function. Then if n is less than or equal to zero, we will return zero which handles the edge case, where the sum of squares from one to zero is zero. Then we're going to initialize the accumulator, iterate from one to n, adding each square to the total. And finally, we will return the total. Then to test it out, we're going to print the sum of squares with 10 as an argument. And for verification, we're going to do that all manually as well. Now, when we run this, we should get that the sum of squares is 385, and it passes the verification as well. Next, let's look at how we can use the Cython decorator on this function. For a second, I was ultra confused. I had no idea where the definition went, but it looks like I scrolled to the side. So here we will import Cython and use the decorator, so at Cython.locals, and define all of the variables which should be treated as C types. Now, if we run this, it should run exactly the same way. We did not optimize this code just yet. Nothing has been compiled. We just decorated it so we could tell Python how we want to Cythonize it. 
Now we need to go to setup.py and create an extension for this. So let's open up setup.py and create a new extension. The name will be set to some squares. The source will be set to some squares.py, just like we defined in our file. The extra compiler arguments are going to be set to 03, just like we did with the other ones. And we will do the same thing for the linker. Next, we need to use the same command that we used earlier to build these extensions. Now, to perform the benchmark, I had to create two different files. One that does everything in vanilla Python and one that does it in C. And because of this, I had to rename the Cython file to some squares Cython. And I also renamed the function inside to some squares C. And that just makes it easier for me to keep track of what's written in C and what's not written in C. But because of this, I also had to change the extension to some squares Cython. That's why you see a lot of new files on the screen right now. And before we run the benchmark, let's try importing the C version of some squares. So from some squares Cython, import some squares C. And then from some squares, we're going to import some squares. Then we can print the sum of squares and pass in 100. And we can do the same thing for some squares in C. Then when we run this, you should notice that both of them are going to work just fine. But very quickly, I do want to mention that using Cython does require you to understand a little bit about the data types that are used in C. For example, if we were to pass in 100,000 into the vanilla Python implementation, that would work just fine. Now, if we were to do the same thing with Cython, we would get a different result because we ran into an integer overflow. And this happens because some types such as long long can only hold numbers up until a certain length. And all I'm trying to say with this is that it's not as simple as just importing Cython to get a free performance boost. You still need to know which data types to use and how to use them. But now I'm going to run the benchmark to show you how much faster the Cython implementation is. So starting up here, you'll notice that we are calculating the sum of squares. And we're performing the same test that we did with Fibonacci. Now here, the Cython version took no time at all, while in vanilla Python, it took a lot longer. When we tried to calculate the sum of squares with a value of 1000, Cython still beat Python by a lot. And going down, you'll see that the difference becomes more and more dramatic. Now, because of integer overflow, once we hit a certain number, we're not going to get the right result back anymore. So at this point, it doesn't really matter that we got the result back instantly because the result is completely wrong. So once again, you need to know C to use Cython effectively. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know if you want to learn more about Cython. I will try to make more videos about it. It's not the easiest topic in the world to make videos about, but it's quite interesting. Maybe we will even jump into a bit of C so that we can write code in Cython much more effectively. So yeah. With all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.